Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful squirrel. To get started, I always like to start with the eyes. That's where you can see the animal's emotion and what they're interested in. So I'm doing two half circles and then a full circle inside. And we want to leave some white space for some highlights. And then I'm going to color in the pupil and I'm going to color in around it. And then I'm going to outline the rest of the squirrel's face. So we have the nose which comes down into a rectangle and then the mouth he's holding an acorn in his mouth or her mouth and then the jaw let's go back up to the top and work on the ear so the ear should come behind the eye goes straight up and then there's a curve you can see a bit inside the ear and then the neck which comes down and then the fur color kind of blends in with the fence that the squirrel is sitting on so we can work on that a little later on the jaw has some white fur so I'm gonna draw that out and then the gray fur comes up the neck and then there's some sandy color around the mouth and around the eyes And then the squirrel is holding onto the fence so we have the little tiny fingers. We have four fingers that are visible. And that connects with the torso or chest. Almost looks like a little glove the squirrel is wearing. And then I'm just gonna sketch out the fence post here comes up almost all the way to the nose and then back down and I need to shift this a bit because the squirrel's finger should be able to wrap around we want the fingers to go over the edge of the fence post. So I might even pull this out this way. Get the proportions right. This is why we do this in number two pencil. So we can adjust as we go along. And I'm going to bring the fence post down. So we can see where the backhand will go. So that's slightly underneath the left hand of the squirrel. And then the belly.
You want this squirrel to have had a decent amount of food. I mean, I want him to have a nice big belly. And then there's a curve down at the bottom for where the foot is. You don't have to erase all of the lines because we are going to be going over this with our number two pencil since this is a gray squirrel and has gray fur. But this way we have a better idea I'm erasing some of the lines. Now there's a patch of brown fur that comes up the middle of the belly. I'm gonna make the back a little bit wider. And I'm leaving some strokes come out so you can see the fur. Tail, gonna bunch up right towards the back. I'm going to go ahead and outline my rest of my fence post. And the posts are pretty close together. You don't want to have too much space in between. And then we have some leaves up top I'm just gonna hint at them here I want the background to be pretty loose and abstract almost like an impressionist painting because we want the focus to be on the squirrel all right now I have my outline complete now to get started on the color, since this is a gray squirrel, we're going to be using our number two pencil for a lot of the color. So I'm going to be adding small dashes or strokes with my number two pencil to create the squirrel's fur. We want to see these strokes so we can see the texture of the fur. To go in the direction that the fur is going in, so in the back the fur is going this way. So I want my strokes to follow that direction. And then towards the belly there is some going out from the belly into the torso. I'm going to have some strokes going that way. And then there's some in between strokes. You want this to be pretty varied. This is a wild squirrel. And they're not going to have groomed hair. You want to follow the curve of the leg. The feet would be here, it's getting cut off in our image. Now for the tail, we're going to use longer strokes because it has longer Or, or hair and then we're going to use those same small strokes that we did for the body for the arm you just want to make sure that you save some white space for what you can think of as the gloves 
or the color of the hands. I'm going to get the back arm here too. You can do a little bit on the side of the belly. And then I'm going to add in some shadow at the top of the head and by the ear, inside the ear. So this is a great project to work on if you just want to do black and white because you can accomplish this whole picture with black and white pretty easily. But if you do want to add some color, the next thing we're going to do for the squirrel is we're going to take a sandy brown. We're going to color in the face with our base coat. And you want to press lightly because we're going to be blending other colors on top. And then we're going to use that same color for the hands. And then I'm going to add some of that color into the body, the underside of the belly, and some by the neck. And then I'm just going to scatter that throughout. The fur, even the gray squirrels aren't completely gray. They are going to have a little bit of brown in them, especially in the tail. And add some nice long strokes here. All right, and then and move on to the darker brown or medium brown. I'm going to color in my acorn. And the nose. And then I'm going to add in some shading around the nose and the cheekbones. And a bit in the ear. And a little bit down the neck. And then I'm going to add some shadow to the hands and then you can see the underside of this hand which is going to be black so we'll do that and then I'm going to get some dark brown for the belly and add some especially by the legs and underneath the hands and the elbows and the shoulders. And then some nice long strokes for the tail. I'm going to take my pink and the color in the ear and then I'm going to blend that in with my sandy brown. And then I'm going to go back and use my number two pencil, but I'm going to use the side of the pencil to get nice long strokes for the wood grain of the fence post because our fence is gray as well. And we want to really do as long strokes as we can so it looks like a continuous piece of wood. You can use your finger to blend that in a bit too. And if you have any strays, you can get rid of them with your eraser. And then to really bring out that gray color, I'm going to actually use a light blue. And this will add a nice pop of color. And in contrast to the brown 
I don't want to put it everywhere. I just want to hint at it. And I'll also fill in some of the white spaces that we have. And our squirrel, I'm going to put in some in our tail. And even add some into the fence posts. Now I'm going to use some black to add some more detail. I'm going to go over the eye because that's the most important part. We want that to really be really noticeable. And the acorn has some shadow, so I'm going to add some lines in for that. And underneath the neck. And then a little bit by the arms. And a little bit on the underside of the hand. And shadow of the hand. A little bit on the other side. Maybe a little bit of shadow. Okay, when you're happy with your squirrel, then we're just going to hint at the background with some orange. So this is supposed to look like trees in the background or maybe some orange lights. So I'm just going to do some patches of orange and then some patches of this yellow or light sand color. And then I'm going to take my orange again and I'm going to blend this in a bit. Keeping some of the patches, but making it look a bit more uniform. Since we're really playing with light here. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll put in some dark patches. Orange. I'm going to take some of the sandy yellow, add that in, and then I'll mix it all together with my orange, pressing lightly with the pencil. We want to get in between the fence posts so we can start to see those. What's nice about using such a bright color in the background is that since we're, most of the squirrel is gray, so it'll give us a nice pop of color. Alright, and then let's take our green. And we're going to color in our leaves. even add some in here if you like. These are orange so blend it in a bit. And there you have it. That's our squirrel. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. 
and keep being creative. Thank you.